Due to the graphic nature of this content, it may not be appropriate for some viewers. The ghosts of year zero are still being exercised in Cambodia. Prayers for the dead, prayers for the victims of Pol Pot's genocide. It's more than 30 years since the Khmer Rouge killed with such ferocity. But for survivors like Nong Champal, it feels like yesterday. Uh. <laughs> Champal is one of the few survivors of the most notorious torture camp of the Khmer Rouge regime, S21. It was run by this man, Comrade Doik. Now, after three decades of waiting, Doik and four other leaders of the regime are finally on trial. The Khmer Rouge is being held to account. I'm Dan Rivers in Cambodia. The people standing trial in this courtroom here behind me face some of the most serious charges imaginable, including crimes against humanity and war crimes. It's more than 30 years since millions of Cambodians died at the hands of the Khmer Rouge. But after years of delays, finally this process is underway. But prosecutors say this isn't just vital for the sake of justice, it's also crucial to simply tell the horrific story of what actually happened here. In 1975, the Vietnam War was drawing to a close. The United States had been defeated by the communist North Vietnamese forces. At the same time, in neighboring Cambodia, another communist army was marching triumphantly into a city. Here, it was the Khmer Rouge taking Phnom Penh and they were about to unleash a frenzy of killing. The Khmer Rouge were hardline Maoists intent on building an agrarian utopia. The cities were emptied and everyone was put to work on the fields. It was this man, Pol Pot, or brother number one as he called himself, who led the regime. During the next three years, eight months and 20 days, he presided over one of the world's worst ever genocides. At least a quarter of Cambodia's population died. 1.7 million men, women and children were either executed, starved to death or died from disease. And based on the evidence. Now some Khmer Rouge leaders like Comrade Doik, real name Kang Get Yu, are finally being brought to justice at a UN-backed war crimes tribunal. Doik ran this interrogation centre at an old school called Tol Seleng. The Khmer Rouge renamed it S21. It became a potent symbol of the depravity of this ultra-communist regime. Prisoners were shackled to iron beds and subjected to barbaric torture to extract confessions of imagined crimes against Ankar, the organisation, as the Khmer Rouge called their regime. Once the prisoner had confessed, they were beaten to death. It's important to remember that Tulsa Leng is just one of 189 similar institutions across Cambodia. Here it's thought more than 14,000 people died. This is now a permanent monument to those who perished at the hands of the Khmer Rouge. It's barely changed since the day in 1979 when it was discovered by the invading Vietnamese forces. The Vietnamese army that toppled the Khmer Rouge in 1979 filmed their advance into Tol Seleng. You may find the scenes inside the prison difficult to look at, scenes that even today defy description. In room after room, the same terrible vision 